All right, so okay. we are we are live here. Hey, Facebook Live, everybody. Um, I'm not going to give you the finger. I'm going to use my finger. We're here with <laughs> Becky ba- uh, Becky Blanton. Yeah. I want you to curl your finger, and I want you to get ready to share this Facebook Live to help her spread her message because it's all about homelessness. We're going to go behind her talk for the first time. Okay, we're not going behind a TEDx talk with Becky. Ted, uh, 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 Becky is a TED Global alumni, so we've got our first TED talk giver without the x the local x on the end congratulations becky i know it's was, it was a few years ago so i'm so glad to have you on we have others in the queue in future mm-hmm. weeks so no longer is this just one type of talk i've always said it's branded talks uh really honored to have you on and and one of the ways that we can show our uh gratitude is by doing this don't don't do this like out of the shining or something this isn't don't don't just do this to be creepy. Do this to to press the share button on this because I know that we have what well over I think well over a million people who are homeless in the United States right now, um, and and we're going to go behind this talk. I've never done a, a interview on homelessness or temporary working homelessness, which is what we're going to hear uh, from Becky here in a moment. So I've read your bio. Um, it, it, the website is, and I'm moving windows around to find BeckyBlanton.com. So I need to know that. Okay. And, uh, we're pretty much ready to rock. If you can give me a five count, Becky, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We're about even. So you ready to rock? Ready to rock. All right. So am I. We're going to go live in three, two. We are live with Ted Global alumni, Becky Blanton. Becky, are you ready to talk? I'm ready to talk. Let's do it. Becky Blanton is a TED Global speaker and a full-time ghostwriter. Becky is currently a part-time RVer, an associate editor for Airstream Life magazine, and working on her third van conversion. Becky's learning to sail. She enjoys ocean kayaking and camping, obviously. A former journalist and photojournalist, Becky loves photography as well. Becky Blanton, welcome to the talk. Thanks, Nathan. I'm glad to be here. Well, your talk is called The Year I Was Homeless, and this is a great perspective because you talk not just about homelessness, but a a very important sector of that, working homelessness. So you describe going in, you know, going in, we we all have a joke, you know, going into the salt mines when we kind of complain about going into work, but in your case, you were coming back from work, and it was in the summertime real sticky and hot, in the winter time, it was very, very cold, and there were all kinds of challenges that you have. And yet, when you finally sat down after a few months and talked with someone about it, it, it sounded to me like they almost discounted you and said, oh, you're not one of them. You have a job, so you're not one of them. So please take right. us behind the talk. There are a whole bunch of different sides to this. I'd love to hear it. Take us behind the talk. Okay. Um I had a job. I was a full-time editor making good money, a Colorado newspaper, and my dad died. And um, what a lot of people don't know is uh, he was physically, sexually abusive. And so when you have an abuser die, it kind of it messes with your head. And um, I quit my job, bought a van, 700 bucks, and hit the road. And the idea was I didn't want to have any regrets. We had... Um, We'd come to terms before he died. He had brain cancer. And I had an essay I wrote for Tim Russert's book, Wisdom of Fathers. And um, Say that again. It's kind of about calling him a monster. Becky, it it kind of went down the Skype. The Wisdom of Fathers was the name of the book? Wisdom of Our Fathers by um, Tim Russert. And my uh, my essay about my dad came out in that that book um, about the time I started, you know, traveling around the U.S., And what happened was I thought I was just traveling in a van. I've always camped. I've been a raft guide. For me, it was just, you know, you're living in your van. But people around me started saying, oh, no, if you live in a van and you're 50 years old, you're homeless. I was working two jobs, but I couldn't find affordable housing. And and that's what it came down to was, you know, how people saw me was not who I was. But I started believing this stuff. I started believing the way they treated me, that I was worthless, 
worthless and useless and some kind of person that was in to steal the silver. So uh, it played with my head a lot, and that was kind of what the talk was about. The talk, the theme of TED Global was invisibility, you know, and um, I did. I felt really invisible, and it was actually 18 months in the van. Um, so it was it was almost two years before I stopped identifying with that population. Becky, I'm going to hit time out right now, and uh, because I, I think there might be extra sp- sunspots or <laughs> something going on, the, the okay. connection is. I'd give the connection an A minus, but with with your talk and and everything else, I want this to be as good as possible. I'm going to continue the Facebook okay. Live. What I'm going to ask, and I'm going to do this also. We're going to both uh, turn off our videos, and hopefully, the audio will be more. Um, uh, 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 even when we do that. So I've just taken my okay. video down. Uh, you've just taken your video down, and uh, we're actually good. So uh, we're going to continue on. <laughs> okay. That's uh, one of the one of the challenging okay. pieces of this. So all right. So it uh, so correction, Becky. Thank you for bringing me uh, bringing me the correction. It was closer to two years. My question to you mm-hmm. uh, that you were living in a van. Um, you you had endured abuse. You had had a hard time finding affordable housing. Yet you didn't self identify mm-hmm. as homeless. Um, looking back on it now, because this was quite a few years ago, what would you category uh, categorize yourself as? Would do you see it differently now, looking back at this time in life, or do you have kind of mostly the same view? Um, I, I really believe homelessness is not about where you live, but it's about your financial situation and the number of choices that you have. I didn't have a lot of choices because I wasn't making the same money I had been. And uh, the government defines homeless as, you know, differently. They de- they define it as uh, living in a building or, or a permanent structure designed to be lived in. Uh, there are a lot, of, I mean, truckers are basically homeless, you know, because they live in their trucks. I know salespeople, construction workers, um, all kinds of people. And right now, the big rage is for college kids to buy a van and convert it and travel the U.S. and live in their van. Essentially the same thing I was doing, but a lot of them work, but they're on the road and they're living in a van, but they don't get called homeless. Um, I was 50 at the time. I'm 62 now, and I think age has a lot to do with it, too. So it's all about, you know, how you define it, how you see it. Well, and so what I'm hearing from that is perhaps the the powers that be need to, as well as maybe some nonprofit groups or NGOs, real, we need a better working definition of homelessness. Yeah, and the 15 percent of the homeless that people see are the ones who are they're, they're addicts, they're pedophiles, they're recently released felons, they have mental health issues. That 15 to 20 percent, according to the homeless statistics, are the ones that we see on the streets. The 80 percent, like I was, were, um, you know, they work full time or part time. They're actively looking to get off the street. They're responsible. Um, they lost their housing due to, uh, you know, either a car broke down or somebody got sick or a child or spouse died or there was a divorce. I, I know a doctor and a lawyer right now who are both living in their offices because um, they're in the middle of a divorce and the bank locked up their, their checking accounts. They can't afford to do anything. So they're. They're living in their office. And a few years ago, I knew a, a, an anchor person for CNN. I can't, I, I won't tell them your name, but, um, you know, she broke up with her boyfriend who was living in her, her car. So, you know, at night she's on TV giving the news, and by day she's living in her car. And she did that for a month because he got abusive and, and she left. So it can happen to anybody. And people, but people tend to uh, stigmatize it by, treating anyone who's homeless like they're one of that 15 to 20 percent with other issues. Yeah, and uh, I, I think we could add to the list, if, if my memory is correct, uh, a whole bunch of staffers uh, working in uh, Senate and uh, and, and uh, representative offices in uh, Washington, D.C. I've heard that they uh, a lot of times can pull out cots and, and live right there, <laughs> pull, pull all nighters yeah. and then some. So uh, this, this definition of homelessness really needs to be either expanded or constricted. It seems like there's a stigmatized 20 percent 
uh, for for um, uh, valid reasons or by society's uh, view. And then there's another 80% of the working homeless who are in maybe more mm-hmm. of a, a, a empowered situation within that demographic. Uh, is that a fair way to look at it, Becky, or would you uh, describe it in a different way? No, I think that's very fair. And, you know, if, if you just Google famous homeless people, you know, Dr. Phil was homeless. When he was 12, he lived in a car with his dad. Um, Jim Carrey, Halle Berry, uh, the guy that plays James Bond, uh, Jewel. Uh, just Google it. There's there's hundreds of, of, you know, CEOs and business owners who were homeless at one point in their life. So we've been talking with our first TED Global guest, Becky Blanton. We're having a pretty deep conversation about homelessness, which is another first for Be The Talk podcast. But we want to pivot over to you, Talk Universe. We want to go behind the talk, and we're going to do that in just a moment in the Blitz Round. And we're back with Becky Blanton. It is time for the Blitz Round, in which I'm going to ask Becky a series of either-or questions related to the preparation and performance of her TED Talk. Not a TEDx one this time. It's a it's a TED Talk. So this might be a little bit different. Uh, so, Becky, you ready to go? Ready to go. All right. Well, uh, first question, were you selected to speak or did you apply? This is almost a silly question because I, I, I think everybody may know the answer to this. I won a contest. Zombies got me to TED. <laughs> Seriously, zombies got me to TED. Um, I applied I applied for a contest uh, that Dan Pink was hosting, and I was one the of the winners. The famous business author uh, to yeah. sell his human drive. Uh, a whole new mind, et cetera, et cetera. That Daniel Pink, right? Yeah. Oh, go on. And um, so he, so he had a contest, and uh, he picked the top three uh, answers. And the and the the contest was what would the next chapter in the adventures of Johnny Bunko be? And my answer was stay hungry, in a famous Steve Jobs um, mm-hmm. perspective. And so then you had to get people to vote for you, and. Um, the way I boosted my votes was I actually wrote the chapter. I was the only contestant to do that, but I actually wrote the chapter. I got some friends to illustrate it, and I was 100 votes out of first place when Seth Godin stepped in. The, the number one <laughs> marketing genius alive today, correct? That's yeah, Seth yeah. Godin. Wow, this gets better and better. Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't ask him or anything. I was in a social media group of his, and um, I was very active and helped a lot of people, and he thought I deserved it. So he asked his his um, followers to vote for me, and I kind of shot to first place. And and then I won a trip to TED. So the prize um, was a trip to TED just to attend. And then they decided uh, at the last minute, uh, the TED organizers, that they wanted to invite all the attendees to submit a, a pitch for a talk. So I submitted, I submitted a talk, and, and mine was selected, and... That's how I got to speak at TED. But the uh, the book, the chapter, was about zombies. <laughs> wow. And I think you can still download it. At, yeah, you can still download it at Dan Pink's website. But, um, yeah, the, the last chapter talks about zombies. So that's how I say zombies got me to TED. So it's going to be kind of hard to duplicate or replicate that. So, okay, so I, I don't usually spend this much time on the first question, but this is highly, <laughs> highly unusual story, which is part of the reason we pivoted uh, early. I knew, I knew this, something about this was coming up, but uh, Dan Pink holds a competition for, and it was, I, mm-hmm. I think I have the, the Johnny Bunko book myself. That was a cartoon book on business, correct? Something, something yeah. along those lines. Yeah. So you, you submitted, yes. You submitted a piece for that, and the prize was not to go on the TED stage. Uh, obviously, it was a trip to go see TED, which is almost as good. While you got there, the powers that be decided to to give you another opportunity to actually pitch to be a TED speaker, and you won. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I think the talk universe in case your hopes are up I think that might have been like a one shot deal <laughs> I think for all of us so wow well, well I actually I actually uh-huh. had two talk I had actually had two talks okay. uh, ex- accepted and Dan and uh, the organizer 
so that selected the talks were kind of torn between which one they like they liked both of them so i had two potential ted talks and they had to they had to pick one so they picked the homeless one Wow. Okay. Well, uh, all right. Well, uh, everything's downhill from here, folks. Okay. Uh, you know, you walk out on stage. Did you have nerves or were you in the zone or neither or both? I was ner- I was nervous. I, I like went outside and cried for an hour afterwards, but that's the first time I ever spoke publicly anywhere in my life. <laughs> well, this is getting even better here, uh, Talk Universe. First first public speaking opportunity is not your local Toastmasters down the street, but Ted Global. <laughs> yeah. Again, and probably another one-shot deal uh, for that. Okay. Well, what what was that experience like? Uh, did you just did you just kind of compartmentalize that in your head and said, "I'll I'll think and process that piece after I'm done," or did you find other uh, another way just to just to go through with this? I. I, I repelled out of helicopters in college. I was an ROTC, and I never felt as nervous jumping out of a good helicopter as I did getting on that TED stage. It was, uh, I was shaking. It was, it was, uh, and, and then there was all the applause at the end, and it was standing room only, and Dan Pink was in the front row, and I shook his hand after the talk and thanked him for the opportunity, and I, I, I really don't remember it. And as a matter of fact, I've never watched my own TED talk. Oh. <laughs> well, hey, it might be it just might. Here's a hint. <laughs> here's the thought. It might be time to to, to start uh, watching that, Becky, because it's a great talk. I mean, Talk Universe. You're going to be able to see it, and you see this is this is the power of ideas worth spreading. This is the power of the TED uh, platform in this case, as well as TEDx or any other branded talk that you're giving, because it's about the idea. It's not any any other any other event would have a whole checklist for Becky. How many, what what other conferences have you spoken at? And where's your sizzle reel as a speaker and all these other things. And because of the idea centric platform, they, this is not, you know, usual It's highly unusual, but uh, you see an idea very well articulated, which is my point. Becky gets up there. Mm-hmm. You could tell she, this is not something that she's doing every day, but it makes the, the power of what she's talking about working homelessness even more poignant because you know it's not a polished slick you know professional like you know like some of us with all of our little moves and 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 gestures and everything else that we do so uh, i i think that's the power of the platform right there um becky what's what's tip a technique or a tool that helped you wow um just being, just being myself, you know, be authentic. Just, just tell people, just share with them, you know, what I felt and what it was like. I worked on the speech a long time. I had a friend that kept saying, "No, it's not good enough. Rewrite it." <laughs> and um, <laughs> well, we all, we I all have one van. of those friends. <laughs> I, yeah, I actually wrote it. I actually wrote it in the in the in the van. I couldn't think, so I crawled into the van to kind of, you know, revisit what it was like. And um, so I wrote the TED talk from the van that I lived in. How appropriate! Uh, to, wouldn't uh, have wouldn't have yeah. it any other way, right? <laughs> right, and then and then when I got back from London, um, I got back in the van. I drove out of the airport and I pulled off into a parking lot of an apartment complex, and I slept in the van. I was so exhausted, I slept in the van, and that seemed kind of appropriate too. It, you know, it felt safe. So I don't know. It's a it, it was a it was a real trip. It, it changed me for sure. We've been enjoying this riveting conversation with Becky Blanton. (laughs) Her TED Talk is called The Year I Was Homeless, and you can go to our show notes page at bethetalk.com, and we will have a link to that, or you can type it into YouTube, find it that way, as well as we want you to connect with Becky because she's got her hands in a lot of different great things, uh, and you can connect with her, let her know how you felt about the talk, and maybe this is a topic that is really poignant for you. Maybe there are family members. Maybe you've personally grew up in a, in a situation similar to what Becky is describing. Maybe you have friends, maybe you have other people, or maybe you just plain want to be more educated about it. You want to connect with Becky, and you can do that at BeckyBlanton.com. Again, BeckyBlanton.com. We'll have a link to that in the show notes page as well. And we're going to be right back with Becky Blanton for the final word of advice. 
And we're back with Becky Blanton. It is time for the final word of advice for Talk Universe. Okay. So my word of advice is to remember that um, no matter where you are or what you're going through, that's not who you are. It's where you are. And a lot of people forget that. So you've got to focus on where you want to be, where you're going, and not on what's happening to you right now. Becky Blanton, thank you so much for coming on the talk today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. Thank you for having me. I, I really enjoyed it. All right, that's a wrap. However, we still are on Facebook Live, so I am going to okay. see here. I'm going to put my Skype video back on, wave hi. I think that worked. I think uh, the tech... Uh, issues uh i didn't have any i don't think i had any more interruptions after we did that so i'm going to do that with guests even more uh let's just check the mm -hmm. facebook live want to remind everybody looks like we've got some people watching again don't do don't do this like the like the little kid on the shining uh movie um <laughs> do this to hit the share button on this interview if you want to help becky and myself um raise awareness for this this uh the, this really need to redefine the working definition of homelessness to to be a little bit less uh uh vague and more helpful to people so if that's something that you can believe in go ahead and spread the message it's all up to you uh talk universe so uh becky uh, any final words before we uh do the we're going to do the skype sandwich with the next speaker <laughs> i call it the Sp the skype sandwich and uh you're going to have uh, as our newest talk alumni going to have an opportunity to, mm -hmm. to help that person uh with some uh advice before our next possible facebook live here in a few any final words yeah I started a nonprofit to teach the homeless how to start their own business, and um, it's possible. People do want to get off the street. Yeah, absolutely. Is there a website for that, Becky? Um, it's called suitcase-to-briefcase.org. Dot org. Suitcase-to-briefcase.org. I love it. Take care, everybody. Hit, hit share. Take care.